While initially being known as the friend of all children with the googly eyes, small size, and kawaii demeanor, with the introduction of the third film, Gamera has foregone such friendly traits and taken the war route, as seen by the lack of care when conducting collateral damage. Dick. In doing so, let's closely observe this artistry. If you've seen my previous videos regarding SH Monster Arts, or possess prior experience purchasing a recent one, modern Monster Arts figures have fallen from grace as regarding sculpt, they are either not even remotely similar to their respective media, reused the same mold, or regarding paint job, oh, fuck it. <laughs> even though competitors are providing better quality products at the fraction of the price. But look at the newly released camera figures, they have conveyed that the blame lies not on the manufacturer but on the production, especially entertainment company behind them. As Toho, whom owns the Godzilla license, spits out disappointment after disappointment. While on the other hand, Kadokawa, who owns the rights to Gamera, seems to abide by the Monster Arts' initial principles as the scope behind this baby here is Perfect. Everything, down to the last minute details. With the fierce demeanor of the head which is accurately replicated, and a vast improvement over their initial release. As portrayed through, the spikes located at the center, the triangular shaped head, the sharp eyes that gives you focus, makes you stronger. And a smooth and clean paint job on the jaw, again, unlike their initial release. Another improvement relative to Godzilla is that the head is built different as they stick to a singular skull even at points of articulation unlike previous iterations of Godzilla, making it seem like Gamera is the kaiju that can withstand artillery and nukes rather than the big G. This is not mentioning the neck as rather than your typical turtle neck syndrome, more likely known as tech neck, Gamera retains a straight and long neck that of course being intricately detailed to the brim which not only adds extra inches to our beloved turtle but also adds sigma male aura due to a straight neck symbolizing a good health. And what defies a turtle than their respective shell in which not only does it act as riz, but also acts as a protective casing in which defends the inner components of the turtle from external attacks, although it is useless when facing off against fucking bouncer. Or a book. Returning to the shell, the rear layer is intricately portrayed as each shell is meticulously placed on top of one another. This is in addition to the extra wrist as each scale differs from one another with certain parts possessing scars and battle marks, while on the other hand, other parts possess marks created from overexposure to seawater, aka barnacles, which makes Godzilla's dorsal place look like an elementary school student designed them in comparison. But the front plating is also no slouch either as it retains the shiny flat finish alongside the individual plates placed on top of one another, acting as a six pack. The legs are also imbued with the equivalent levels of love as the coarse, rough, and irritating skin is superbly replicated as if the actual suit was shrunken down and placed in front of me. This is in addition to the claws and horns beautifully rendered with the extra polish that symbolizes Gamera is consuming healthy levels of nutrients, as well as being superb in punching and knocking down hostile kaijus. And we can't forget the tail which, while tiny compared to the king of the monsters himself, is also meticulously sculpted like the rest of the body. But you utilitarian wise only acts as a third leg to balance out Gamera when he's standing on two legs. Now, just like the sculpt regarding the Monstars line, probably the most affected department would be the accessory department as the once abundance in accessories from the initial releases such as the SH Monstars Gigan and the SH Monstars Kong were reduced to the shell of his form of glory or straight out forsaken portrayed through the SH Monstars Final Wars Goji and Monster X. But this now seems like like the result of the company that owns the respective kaijus, as Kadokawa and their gamma releases, both present and thereafter, are packed with a buttload of accessories that would make even Figma figures cry. The first accessory is the severed right hand which is a result of when Gamera tried the Aquaman maneuver in which by removing the right arm and attaching the slump, you have a physically disabled form of Gamera, in which the inner components such as the bones and torn muscle are exposed for the 
whole world to see. Alongside well, being a prime target of interest if Gamera has a Japanese nationality. But if Gamera finds his resolve with the ray of the sun shining brightly behind him, Gamera follows the Skywalker lineage by attaching an additional arm, in which this case happens to be composed of flames from an enemy's attack and used to deliver Gamera's signature move, Fire Punch! your kaiju trivia, Gamera, unlike that of your average turtle, possesses the ability of flight, making our friend of all children over here lethal in midair. In doing so, initiate transformation sequence, let's go! And here's Gamera in a dogfighting mode, in which the front arms have been replaced with a pair of gigantic flippers in order to accommodate aerodynamic maneuvers, as well as being able to pull off Will Smith's signature move. Yeah. And just like any of the other appendages at Gamera's disposal, are meticulously recreated in which the skin during flight seems to have hardened in order to resist pressure from above, or the lack thereof. The legs are also tucked within the shell with a pair of smaller rear flippers being there for added maneuverability. And then there's the lower case of the shell in which the legs are tucked in, and a tail hardened in response to physical trauma. Acting similar to the tail of a plane and completing the flight mode. There's also this miniature stand that attaches to this fire effect piece, which is translucent in nature and recreates the jet effects when Gamera is in flight. When regarding Gamera's size, while not one of the heavier kaijus, one must not forget that Gamera is still a tall lad, especially with those straight legs and neck, in which Gamera here stands at 16 centimeters or 6.3 inches tall, allowing Gamera to tower over most and only being considered a Midget by larger kaijus. Here's the SH Monster Arts Gamera next to Gunpla, Haya Toys, SH Figure Arts, Figma, and the SH Monster Arts Gamera Original and Rebirth version. Now, given the fact that Gamera is a turtle, most people would assume that the little G would move like an actual turtle, in which I can't really blame anybody for that misconception. But we're talking about the SH Monstrous line backed by Kadokawa, in which previous Kadokawa owned licenses rendered in posable figure forms, very specific, have been extremely posable, in which the same applies to the kaiju roster. Head movement is diverse, especially with the clean neck movement as it allows Gamera to engage in both surface-to-surface -surface and surface-to-air, alongside air-to-air and air-to-surface targets. The jaw can open relative to how much space is available between the head and the neck, so if Gamera has a double-sided chin, it can't properly open its mouth. Our movement is pretty diverse due to the various interconnected joints allowing Gamera to pull off Gung Fu, although be aware that the pieces fall off very easily. Body movement leg movement is limited and what are those? so when it comes to articulation better than Godzilla and John Wick you pissed John are you yeah so what is there left to say the SH Monstars iteration of Gamera here is not only a great release in a while by the Monstars line, but a work of art as the sculpt is beautiful as portrayed through the rough and hard skin that Armstrong would blush over, 
the risk-inducing shield, and the reworked and screen-accurate head, making it hard for one not to love this release. This is in addition to the abundance of accessories that makes even SH figure arts and Figma figures blush, and as a reminder of why I love the SH Monster Arts line in the first place, and the impressive amount of articulation that surpasses the big G, even though this guy is a bloody turtle. Making Gamera here, as a filming, the best figure released this year. In doing so, if you can get your hands on Gamera over here, regardless of whether you're a Gamera fan or not, I would recommend to do so immediately as this precious gem is a must buy if you love figures overall, in which I will give the SH Monsters Gamera, Kyoto Decisive Battle version, a ranking of an A+.